What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the Burley Fishing Channel. Fun video for you today. We are gonna do a walkthrough on the Hobie 360 Pro Angler, specifically right after we've installed a Garmin Panoptic system into this kayak. Um, it's a premium system, definitely a huge upgrade for this boat and was a significant project, but it was fun. And if you enjoy watching two people getting neck deep into a project that they are not necessarily equipped for, I think you should go part, watch parts one, two, and three, where we get really detailed on how we installed everything, the step-by-step -step process for three specific individual portions of this install. But for this video, I'm not gonna do that. I wanna show you a little bit of the before, some of the funny in process, and realistically, just the after. I wanna show you what the final process uh, the final uh, result was what everything looks like. So I'm super excited to show you that. Before we start showing you some of that footage and start walking you through the boat and the new uh, electronics setup, I just want to, thank, I want to say thank you so much for checking out this video. Thank you for, which I know you're going to do, subscribe, uh, smash the like button on this video and ring that notification bell that you see on your screen so you can see when we post the next video. Also, we have a live podcast that we stream, again, live, every single Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we would love to see you there in chat. We have awesome people from all over the fishing industry, and if you can't join us live, you can check it out in as a podcast as well, wherever you get your broadcasts. Without further ado, let's take a look at this boat. I'm gonna start from the rear of the boat, I'm gonna work my way forward to the crown jewel, which is the head unit, but let's start in the back first. All right, so here we are at the back of the boat. Now, before I go into some of the details on how everything's put together, why we chose what we chose, I wanna make a really critical point here. Um, we got a lot of this information from people who have done these installs before us. Most specifically, got a lot of inspiration from Christine Fisher's uh, setup. She runs the same kayak has a very similar setup, um, and that's because we thought hers was awesome. And she worked with the folks at Dugout Bait and Tackle down in Marietta, Georgia. Um, we bought some parts directly from them. We absolutely stole a lot of these ideas. I wanna just be really clear. They did an amazing job putting this boat together and putting together the whole system, laying out everything from like the weight distribution to how they did the mounting. They did a phenomenal job. I wanna call it out. Go watch that video if you hadn't. Leave them a comment. Let them know how awesome everything looks. And I will tag them in this video as well. Now. We did a few things slightly differently, um, but that's the great part about having a kayak and that's the great part about uh, doing a project like this yourself instead of having someone professional do it. It can be a little bit cheaper, it can be the same price, but at the end of the day, you get to do it exactly how you wanna do it. So this is our battery setup right here. This is a Minn Kota trolling motor box. I think these are, these are less than $100. You can find them on Amazon, they're not that expensive, but it holds on your uh, battery. It keeps the water off of it for the most part. It's not submersible, but it's like water, very water resistant-ish. It's plastic, there are some places where water could get in technically, you know, around the box. If you flip, you're probably gonna have an issue, but if you flip, you got a huge problem anyways, and this boat is very hard to flip, can confirm. Uh, but this is where the battery resides. The nice thing about having the battery here is that the head unit and the transducers are either in the middle or the front of the boat. So having a component that's um, at the back of the boat to counterweight that keeps you pretty even keeled, which I really like. Another thing about this box that's great is it has two ports for accessories. So in this case, I've got a really handy dandy uh, USB and USB-C uh, power plug plugs in this cigarette lighter. You got one on each side, which is pretty cool. Um, and it does allow us to take the battery in and out very easily. Now you might be wondering, what did we have before? Funny you should ask. So this is what we had before. It's an FPV power, is that a 12 volt, seven amp power battery? Pretty small battery. You can see there is a slight size difference. We have a, 50, a 12 volt, 54 amp battery in this box from Dakota Lithium. Not a cheap battery, but a significant upgrade and really uh, is gonna power this thing for a heckin' long time. I'm really actually excited to put that to the test and see how many days I can get on the water running both transistors. Because again, we have the regular, the EcoMap um, Garmin unit, which is great. Does the side imaging, does the down imaging, ultra super clear, amazing screen. But we also have the Panoptics live scope on the side. So it's two transducers you can be running at the same time. So this battery has got its work cut out for it, but I think it's gonna be just the right size. And then this battery fit inside the cargo hatch, which is actually right underneath where this battery is. It's like, it's not really a cargo hatch, it's like an access hatch. Um, but this Burley Pro, 
Batarang was uh, really cool. It allowed you to basically just plop this guy in and pull it out whenever you needed it. And then we basically had one cord that ran from the back of the boat where the battery was all the way up to where the head unit was and it ran inside the hull. Uh, Hobie, if you haven't seen a Hobie kite before, they have what's called the in-hull wiring system. It's a very cool system that has strategically placed ports, uh, waterproof ports where, where you can um, put these little rubber grommets around these cords, run the cords through them without drilling any holes in your kayak, and you can wire pretty much the whole boat. This, the old system, we had to drill zero holes. This one, we had to drill technically two or technically three but really two ho two holes one of them is actually right here i will show you that in just a second so let's take a closer look at this battery box and how we actually got it installed all right so there is the battery box now the battery has a cord that connects to this the red and black power chargers then we have the short cable um, with a fuse that connects to this port that we actually put into the system so we drilled this hole a very small hole that is another component of this install. We used a Yak power, uh, power system to control this whole thing. It basically has a channel, um, a controller point up in the front. I'll show you that node in just a second, but it has five different channels. That allows us to have one power source individually powering five different things. In this case, we're gonna use two of those channels. One is gonna be for the Panoptics live scope, that separate transducer system. The second one is going to be the Garmin, you know, standard down imaging, side imaging, echo map. Now, uh, so this is where all the bad, uh, this is where the power comes that goes into that Yak power kit, and this is where it plugs into the boat. So there's a, there's a wire that goes from here all the way to the front of that boat. That was a little bit of a challenge. That was like sort of the first problem that we ran into. The cable, uh, the, the, the original power cable, um, was actually only maybe six or seven feet long. We needed like nine or 10 feet to get all the way to the front of the 14 foot Hobie Pro Angler. But we made do. We just took one of the other channel uh, cables that came with this because again, five channels. We took one of those extra cables in order to extend it all the way out. Again, you can check that out in part one of our install. Now I will say some things I really like about what we did here. One, there's this little tab that keeps the water off of that, which is really nice and clean. Also, it's really easy to just pop that out um, and unplug the battery when you need to do when you need to charge it or when you're traveling. Um, when we initially did this install, that seemed to be a really big problem, and I'm glad that we found what is a pretty simple and elegant solution to that problem. So now that that is the battery, let's go up to the front of the boat where you can start seeing where some of the gorgeous electronics are. Let's do that. Now I mentioned there was a control module, that Yak power system. That is this right here. This is a really, really cool feature. And again, one of the more premium components that you can get for a kayak. I, well, like I mentioned, there are five, it allows one battery to power, to power five different channels. So what do I do? I push this button right here and boom, all five of these light up. You've got channel one, channel two, bow, your stern, and middle. Now we are not using these three channels, one and two. One is going to power this head unit, I'll show you that turned on in a second, and two is going to control the panoptics, which you can actually see right now, that transducer, but I will show you that in just one moment. Now, like I mentioned, we had a cable coming from the power all the way up to this head unit right here. So now you might be wondering, where are all those cables? Now you might think you'd be able to see them somewhere in the front hatch. There's a little bucket right here, you can pull this out um, and you might be able to see some of those cables. Yes, there are a handful of cables that you can see here. They're all zip tied, nice, neat and tidy, which is great, but there's really only two cables. There's a small amount of uh, transducer cable and then there is the power cable that's coming across. That's about actually it. So where are the rest of those cables? They're actually mounted in a plate right behind here and in between the tub that sits here in the front hatch and this portion of the kayak, about six inches in front of here on a really cool plate called the Tim Percy mounting plate. I'm assuming it's Tim Percy that came up with that plate design. It is custom made to fit inside the Hobie Pro Angler 14 foot. They have another one for the 12. Again, that was one of the cool tips from the, the people at Dugout Bait and Tackle. I will leave a link to some of their stuff here uh, so that you can maybe go find that plate for yourself if you're interested. And again, all this is, if you wanna see the detail on the install, the issues we had and how we came up with some of the solutions, you can go and check them out in parts one, two, or three um, and they should be posted as well. So you can go check those out. 
So let's go take a look at that mounting plate and all of the electronics and how they're sort of sitting inside uh, the boat. Now one thing you're going to notice right off the bat, there is not a ton of clearance here. Like almost none. So when I open this, there's maybe an inch of clearance between these cables and the back of the unit and being able to open up freely that front hatch. That actually was one of the most complex parts of this whole build. I'll show you some of the detail when we come back to the head unit, but for right now, rest assured that that was a modern feat of engineering and just elbow grease know-how. Before we get to that, I wanna show you where everything looks like. So you've got this front hatch, a lot of storage, great, um, awesome feature of the Hobie, but when you pull this bucket out, you do have some space inside there. And you guys can't see a darn thing, so I'm gonna get some light and I'm gonna show you what it looks like in here. So this is what the inside of this cockpit looks like post install. You've got your Garmin controller unit. This is really the brains of the operation. This communicates with space and lets, every, lets you know exactly where you are, what's going on, and can probably read your bank statements. It's also controlling that panoptics unit. So there's a cable running from the panoptics unit directly into here, and then from here into the Garmin head unit. This is also where your Yak Power uh, switch system is. So here are your three channels that today we're not using, but we will be using at some point. Um, here's some extra transducer cable. And then again, the power comes through here. So your little controller, that little circular uh, remote button, that's right on the other side of the boat right here. And then this is that Tim Percy mounting plate. You can see it's black. I've got it zip tied to the mast. It's very secure, not going anywhere. But holy cow, does that clean things up quite a bit? Like unbelievably clean everything's up and out of the water unless you've got absolutely submerged so this is pretty darn safe and secure and again just like super super clean and tidy i absolutely love this can't speak highly enough about the system everything is just drilled in with bolts um, again just super super clean now one thing i want to mention we did have to drill a hole right here into these are all rod tubes six rod tubes you can see i've got some rods in here we did have to drill a hole to get the cable the transducer cable over here again i'll show you the detail but we got your transducer over here for the pan optics um the live scope that is coming through the rod tube on this side of the boat from the outside of the boat and comes into the boat through here so that was a a little bit of a unique challenge um, and definitely a little nerve wracking cutting, but it actually worked out really clean, uh, made for a really short, uh, clean installation. So I was really happy with that, but a couple of zip ties and this whole thing is pretty neat and tidy and check it out. It doesn't even get in the way of your storage. That is heckin' awesome. Again, it's just super clean, super tidy. Love that. So now what I wanna to touch on briefly is this whole thing right here. If you've seen pictures of a Hobie 360 Pro Angler, um, or if you're fam familiar with it, you'll know that this does not come with the boat. This is their custom H rail. This is my custom H rail. The H rails on the sides of the boat and at the front and the back do come with the boat. They are also on the H crate, which in, is in the back is, is purchased as an accessory. This is not part of the H rail system. Now, this is basically one of these H rails cut to length. They have a couple different lengths. Again, there are details in the best way to do this in part, I think two, maybe three, part three video. So go check that video out if you want details on how we actually executed this. Suffice it to say, we bought a couple of these rails, we cut them down to size and bolted them to the plates here on either side of the front of the Hobie 360. We also bought two universal mounting plates. That's plates like this, well, you can't see this one. That's plates like this one right here. They basically are just plates that are attached to these um, clamps that fit directly on custom for these H-rails. Bought two of those and then screwed this down to it. Now, I mentioned that this was one of the more complex and challenging portions of the build. That is because depending on how you orientate the mount, which side of the bar you decide to mount your system on, um, how you have your cables running through to your head unit, and depending on how far back or forward you are gonna be pedaling, de determines how far uh, forward or back your atrial can actually sit. All of those different components played a major role in figuring out this exact setup. Jeff and mine are very similar, however, they're not exactly the same. Jeff has a longer pedal than I do because he's like, you know, apparently the internet thinks he's like 17 feet taller than me, but he has longer legs than I do. He pedals further than I do, which means his pedals go further forward. So he has a slightly different system than I do. And then again, all that is to say, you have to get it out of the way of the back of your 
hatch so you can open and close it. Pretty cool, pretty unique, very difficult. One of the more, probably the most challenging component of this whole thing. It's a lot of guess and check ultimately at the end of the day. And then I mentioned the through hall wiring kit. So this is one of those through hall wiring kit components bought after market. You can see there's one right here. There's one on this side of the boat. There's one in the middle. They're all over the place. This one we had to go buy. We had to drill this hole because remember all the power and all the cables are on the other side of this portion of the kayak. So all the cables had to come from there through here and into the head unit. This is pretty slick. This made life very simple and very clean. All right, so now let's see how this performs. So this is the thing, this is uh, power off, power on, very clean, very simple. Now let's say I wanna turn channel one on, that is the head unit, boom. Now there's power for the head unit. If I click channel two, boom, there is power for the panoptics um, portion of the system. Again, you haven't seen it yet, it's actually right here. I'm gonna spin the whole kayak around so you can see this last, uh, but I wanted to show you this bad boy Start it up, pull the cover off, we do have this shield. This is made by Burley Pro. This is a visor. The larger your screen size, the more sun protection you're gonna want. What we used to have was a Lowrance hook system. I think this was like a five or seven. I honestly don't even remember, but that is the difference, like not even in the same galaxy. I had it mounted right here like so. Um, just not even close. And I still was shielding with this. I'd be like, oh, wh what is that? And that is, you know, that's just a factor of on like a five or a seven inch screen. Imagine on a 10 inch screen that's mounted higher, you're gonna want that protection. So I'm, I'm really happy with the Burley Pro. We have a couple of Burley Pro products. I'm actually gonna put a bumper guard on the front of this boat and the transducer. I'm not gonna show you guys that. If you really wanna see that, you can go check out part two of this three part install. You can watch all of that happen. That was, a train, met, a train wreck that met a disaster, uh, that met a hurricane. It was rough, but we figured it out and it's actually super clean, but we did use a Burley, a Burley Pro aftermarket bumper for that as well. Now, let's see this bad boy powered up. So I've got one and two turned on, and when I push this button, we have power. Unbelievably cool, gorgeous looking screen, super excited to get this thing to work. Now, the last thing I wanna show you um, before we close this video out is how we mounted and how we got everything set up for the Panoptics transducer. Again, a second transducer that you need to find a way to mount on your kayak. Let's take a look at that. So there's two or three really cool portions of how uh, this was mounted. Um, again, this is that Panoptics transducer. You do need two transducers. There's one under the boat, again, for side and down imaging and all that sort of thing. This is just for the Panoptics live scope. Um, so it did require uh, a little bit of an extra challenge and, and some more things to figure out. So <clears throat> there were some really cool things that we, we were able to find. First of all, um, this aluminum arm, um, it is three or four different pieces all screwed together, but it's, it's aluminum and some really high quality plastic. It's pretty min minimalist. This is, I think, a 24 inch long um, arm, and it is built specifically for mounting this transducer. Fishing Specialties <coughs> um, makes this arm. Again, the folks at Dugout Bait and Tackle um, have this for sale. We'll, we'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna find this um, or just find them. But again, this idea came from Christine Fisher. She put a year on the water with a couple of different options and then came to this one, I think, for 2022. And I, I gotta be honest, this is head and shoulders above anything else that I've seen. The cable, again, comes from the rod tube, comes through here. I have it zip tied in two places. I'll, sh I'll do a close up on this in just a second. But then the, ca the transducer cable comes down through here, pops out the bottom, and then it actually goes into this piece right here. I wanna show you this because this is uh, another one of the cool portions of this whole build. So. This is a universal mounting plate. You can see it right here. Um, and then you just bolt on. This came with a fishing specialties piece. So I can move this wherever I need or want to on the boat at any time. I can completely take it off if I don't wanna use it. Not a problem. If I totally wanna take the whole panoptic system off because I'm worried about transportation, if I'm, you know, gotta clean the boat, if I'm worried about anything, I can unplug it from inside here, inside the, uh, on that Tim Percy mounting plate, I can unplug it from the Garmin system. I can run the cable back through here, cut these two zip ties, and this whole thing can come completely off in like less than five minutes. That is heckin' awesome. That is super cool. Now, it gets better though, so I'm gonna clamp this back on. Just like so. Super heavy duty plastic, but check this out. 
Um, let's say I'm in transportation and I'm driving to my destination. I have this, you know, inside the boat um, while it's in the back of my truck. I get to my destination, I'm out on the water, and now I want to use the 360 system. All I do, sitting inside my kayak, I pull this bad boy out, and all I have to do is plop it inside of here. This is obviously not perfect because this is on a kayak cart, but you just plop it inside of here, it clips in, and you can spin this 360 degrees. So let's say I'm fishing a spot and I'm like, oh, you know what? I've got my forward facing sonar, but what I really want is left forward facing sonar. All I have to do is take this arm right here at the top and turn it to the left and this thing will shoot 100 feet to the left. What an unbelievable use for a crazy technology. If I want to shoot it to the right, it's this transducer arm is slightly lower than the boat. I can shoot out that way too. Um, that actually is a game changer for the flexibility and being able to use this, especially in a kayak when you have a lot less boat control without like a three, you know, a trolling motor. Um, super cool. I just absolutely love that. And again, it's super heavy duty. It's pretty compact. I, I'm really digging that design. There is one more thing that we figured out that was an absolute game changer. And that was using this uh, Yak Attack mount. This is like a GoPro mount. This is plastic. And then you had to buy a separate um, flush mount that went with it. But it's basically a, a one inch RAM uh, mount that we were able to uh, attach to the Garmin unit. There are details on this in a different video, so you can definitely go check that out, but this was heckin' awesome. Simply by loosening this, I can point this in any orientation that I want. Um, Garmin does send some, because again, when you're pointing this transducer, it's pointing straight forward and then like a 45 degree angle down. Now let's say you're in some really deep water and you wanna catch a different angle. Normally, I'd have to, on my boat, like go under the boat somewhere and like tinker and mess with the whole thing in order to do that. On this kayak, I don't have to do it all. I pick up the arm, I loosen it up, and I point it down, and now it's facing down. If I wanna go left and down, I point it down, I turn the arm to the left, and now I'm going left and down. Again, this is like hyper custom, hyper fast, pointing this wherever I want, however I want, in like a couple of seconds. That is just genius. That was one of the coolest things that we were able to see. Um, and again, if you wanna see that install, you can see it in part three of that video. Uh, but that is the panoptics portion of this install, the transducer portion of this install. So let me show you very quickly. These are the three rod tubes. And as you can see, that cable is coming. Oh, there's a lot of shadows there. You probably can't see a darn thing. There we go. You can see the cable is coming out of that top um, rod tube. It comes across here. Again, it's zip tied right there like so in two different places. And that in two different places, there's the other place. And the function of that is really to keep the transducer cable out of the way of rods that I put in the rod tube. I didn't want to lose a rod tube. Six rod tubes in a kayak is a huge deal. Um, losing one is kind of a big deal and I didn't want to. Everything seems to be working just fine for me putting them in and out of there. It's really not in the way. It's only in the rod tube for maybe six inches. I just think that that, you know, worked out really clean and was really simple. If anybody else has a better idea on how to do that, let me know. So again, this is that fishing specialties plate on a universal mounting plate from the Hobie 360. You can get those at the store. You can get them on Amazon. Fishing online, fishing special, a whole bunch of different places. So you're gonna take your transducer arm and you just drop it in like so. And then there you go. You can turn that thing however you need to. Um, super flexible, super sturdy. Again, you can just clip it in with that little clip um, and turn it however you need to turn it. That is a super slick, super clean job. And again, let's say that I want to change the direction of this. I want to tilt it down. I want to tilt it forward. I want to you know, do whatever. All I have to do is loosen this up just a smidge. Just loosen that up just a smidge and then I can move it however I need it um, a billion degrees. That is a super clean, um, super simple job. Really, um, really impressed. So that's a walkthrough on the Garmin setup that we did with the Pan Optics. Kind of what it looks like, some of the detail. Again, if you really want all the details on how we did everything, how we did the install, you can go check out to part one, two, or three of our videos um, to get all the technical stuff. But really, this was a walkthrough so you could see the final product. So what, I'm, what am I really hoping for after installing this? Do I think that I'm gonna catch every fish in the lake? No, I do not. Do I think that it's gonna help me become a better angler? Hopefully learn some things? Yes, that's really what, the, that's what this is all about. And ultimately, do I wanna catch more fish because of it, 100,000%. Um, let us know what you thought of this build. Let us know what you thought of the install and the final product. Would love to see your comments down below. If you have any suggestions for how we can improve maybe the battery situation in the back or what we should use our other three channels for, go ahead and leave a comment down below. We'll check them out. Maybe we'll do your idea. 
If you have not already, please again, like, subscribe, uh, ring the notification bell so you can see the next video and or come check us out Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern on YouTube. We live stream or check us out as a podcast. Again, we have people from all over the fishing industry every single week. It's a ton of fun and we would love to see you there in chat. And as always, we'll catch you out on the water.